Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at four technical analysis that deals with sentiment indicators and they are in front of you on the screen, which is trend statistics, confidence index, short interest and put call ratio. Before we start, I'll always like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they help you, it means they might help other people. And on my website, you'll find additional resources to complement your accounting, your finance courses, and if you are studying for your CPA. Let's start with the first indicator, with, which is trend statistics. And sometimes trend statistics is called ARMS index because the person that created it, I believe his name is Richard ARMS in 1967. And the trend statistics is just so you know where the name is coming from. It's trading TR index. This is where the name is coming from. Here, what you do, what you are doing is you are looking at the volume. So market volume or, or the size of the market is sometimes used to measure the strength of the market rise on and fall. So what happens is technicians, what they do, they look at the volume and they say market advances to be more favorable sign of continued price increases when they are associated with increased trading volume. What does that mean? It means when the stock market goes up, that's fine. But you also have to look at the volume. For example, if the volume yesterday was 5 million and the, and the market was down and today the volume is 2 million, it went up. Well, it's not a really a good indicator because the prior day, the volume on the downsize was higher. So you want a large volume when the prices are going up if you want to be if you want to be confident also market reversers are considered more bearish when they are associated with higher volume it's when there are more selling than buying but much much more selling than buying when the volume is higher then we assume on on the way down the market is more bearish now how can we measure this uh, this indicator this is what the trend statistics is coming from it's basically two ratios divide them by each other simply put you're going to take the volume of decliner divided by the number of decliners this is ratio number one volume of advancing the divided by number of advancing this is ratio number two then you will take those two ratios and divide them by each other so the ratio of average trading volume and declining issues to divided by the average volume and advancing issues so ratio above one are considered bearish because the falling prices would then have a higher average volume than the advanced stocks indicating net selling is the selling pressure now that's you know those those numbers again they are a little bit subjective it, it depends how you interpret them so let's take a look at an example and let's take a look at this uh, this issue on I, I don't i don't have the date this is for the nysc the number of advancers decliners uh the number, the volume, the share volume for advancing, the share volume for declining. Now we can plug in the formula. Those are the ratio of decliners divided by the ratio of advancers. And the ratio is 1.457. Again, if the numerator is higher, if this, if the numerator is higher, you're gonna, if the numerator is higher than the denominator, if the numerator is higher than the denominator, you're gonna have ratio more than one, obviously. So it's, you have more bearish than, more bearish. It's, is, is explained as more bearish but be aware for every buyer there must be a seller of stock as well so rising volume and rising market should not necessarily indicate a larger imbalance of buyers versus seller and for example if we have a, a trend above one like 1.457 it's considered bearish that's one way to look at it it could equally be interpreted as indicating there's more buying activity in the declining issue. You could also look at it that way. So it's not only 1.4, it's bearish or less than one, it's bullish. You just have to look at, put it into context. That's the whole point. It's understanding what the statistic tells you and put it into context. The second indicator we're going to look at is the confidence index. And the confidence index, also known as the bearing confidence index, because the bearing created this index. And basically, it's the ratio. It's a ratio, obviously. Uh, what, what's a ratio? Dividing two numbers of average yields on the tap ton rated corporate bond divided by the average yield on the 10 intermediate grade corporate bond. Simply put, in the numerator, you have the excellent bond, the triple A, the double A bond. So in the numerator, you have the good bonds. In the denominator, you have maybe the triple Bs and the double B's bond, intermediate bond. So what are you trying to find out? You're trying to find out what's the spread between them. For example, just to give you an example, 
if the triple A if the triple A and A on average are yielding a three point eight percent and uh, well, let's say 4%. Let's say, let's assume they are yielding 4%, 0.04. And the intermediate bond are yielding, uh, let's assume, uh, 7%. 7%. What can we say? What's the ratio? If we divide 4 by 7, it should give us approximately 0 0.57. 0 0.57. Now, is this good? Is this bad? Well, we have to look at something else. Like, how would you know if this is good or bad? Let's assume the prior day, the ratio... Um, or, or prior period or last week the ratio was 0 0.03 over 0 0.04 which is 0.75 I, I just randomly selected 57 and 75 what does that mean okay always the ratio will be less than one I, I want to make sure you understand this why because in the numerator you have the higher yielding bond which should have a lower rate than the intermediate bond so always the numerator will be will be, uh, I'm sorry, yes, the numerator will be lower than the denominator. The numerator will always be lower than the denominator. Therefore, it's always less than one. The ratio is less than one. The closer it is to one, so if we compare 57 to 75, 75 is closer to one. The closer to one, it means we have more confidence in high yield bond and intermediate bond it means everybody is doing well it means everybody is earning good yield on their corporate bond if there's a high spread the reason there's a high spread because that's that's the the, the amount of risk is higher between the triple a and the and the triple b bond so it's like it's it's a bad signal in a sense risk is increasing so the ratio would always be less than one because bonds rated a higher rated bond will offer row, lower yield to maturity of course the presumption is what's the presumption why do we do why do we compute this bond the bond traders revealed a trend that will emerge soon in the stock market why because bonds deal with money they deal it's a credit market the credit market drives everything if companies want to operate they need money where do they go they go to the credit market so if the credit market if the triple a bond and the triple triple a and the triple b the spread between them is not too large it means there's not a lot of risk when there is risk in the market, the spread will increase. Therefore, there is a risk. It's an indication that risk will spill into the stock market. Therefore, it's basically, it's like a signal signal to what's going to happen next. So if it's easy credit, companies can always borrow money and buy other companies so that times are good. People can spend because there's not a lot of risk in the credit market. Okay. So when bond traders are optimistic about the economy, they might require smaller default premium on lower rated bond. That's That's the whole idea. It means you have confidence. You don't want to, you, you don't want to ask for a lot of premium in comparison to the premium bond. So the spread would, would, would be smaller. Therefore, the ratio will be closer to one. So hence the yield spread will narrow and the confidence index will approach one. It will never be one. There, there is no way it will be one in a sense that now the high yield bond and the lower yield and the intermediate bond are, are yielding the same, the same, uh, the same, uh, yielding the same that that, that that that's that doesn't make any sense they're either they're all triple a or they're all triple b then okay therefore higher values of confidence index are bullish signals i believe this is this like this this bearing confidence index this is a good signal i would look at that's my personal opinion i would look at this um to i would look to use this more than i would look to use for example the trend statistics again this is for personal use and this basically interest rate spread is is was was a good indicator before the housing crisis this is what happened during the housing crisis the triple a or the government government bonds and the corporate bond which is the private they, there was a big spread between them it means there's a high risk short interest is another confidence indicator is the total number of shares of stocks currently sold short in the market what does it mean sold short it means you sell it, then you buy it later. You borrow the money to sell it, then you buy it later. What does that mean when you sell it? It means you are bearish. Some technicians interpret high level of short interest as bullish, others as bearish. So we're going to look at both ends. Why would you interpret it as a bullish sign? Why would you interpret it as a bearish sign? Because you could interpret it either way. The bullish, the bullish perspective, what's going to happen is this. You shorted all these stocks eventually you're going to have to buy them unless the company go out of out of business eventually you're going to have to cover your position when you cover your position you're going to have basically a counter effect you're going to bid the prices up so the bullish perspective because all short sales must be eventually covered short sellers eventually must purchase shares to return to return the one they have borrowed i meant to say borrowed the stock not borrowed money but technically you're borrowing money 
by buying the stocks and shorting the stocks. Short interest represent a signal of future demand for the stock. This is what the bullish are saying. Well, if there's a high short in the market, that's good. Eventually, it's going to go up. Short interest, uh, rep, uh, as short sales are covered, the demand created by by the share prices will force prices up. So eventually the prices will be bid up. Now the bearish interpretation, now we're looking at the bearish interpretation, is based on the fact that short sellers tend to be larger, more sophisticated by more sophisticated investors. So who short stocks? <laughs> I do short stocks. I will not consider myself in any way, shape or form sophisticated investor or a confident investor. Matter of fact, if people do exactly the opposite of what I do, you'll be fine. But the point is, not your average investor short stocks. You need to know a little bit more about the market. I, I, don't, I don't short I don't short short stocks. Actually, I only shorted one stock in my lifetime and I covered it before it went down to zero. It's a GM before it went bankrupt. So you just have to be very careful. If I kept it, I would have did very well. It was $22. I shorted it. I covered it early. You know, I just did not have the guts to keep on going. Uh, yes. So uh, the point is, if it's if there is a lot of bearish, it means it's 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 a pessimistic signal because people that know what's going on more confident will short the market. So that's why that's the bearish interpretation. So increased short interest reflect bearish sentiment by smart money, which would be a negative signal for the market prospect. Now I'm going to show you. And let me clear this. The short interest for Tesla, and this is not the full picture, because after July, <laughs> Tesla even went up to, it, it crosses 2000. But the point is, this is the short interest of Tesla, this line here. So notice, at some point, we had a lot of short interest. This is in, mil in millions of shares. So multiply by six, uh, by, you yeah, add three zeros to this. So notice, as the stock price start to go up of Tesla, short interest, people started to cover their short. So as they're covering their short, now who's driving who you don't know? What are the short knowing? Are the short saying, well, the stock's going to go up. I'm going to cover as my cover, the stock price goes up. As the stock price goes up, more short sellers would say, well, the stock's going up. Let me sell my, uh, cover my position. As you cover your position, the stock price will go up. But here you can clearly see as as the stock keep on going higher and higher, basically just straight line, short interest just dropped. Okay. Now, one way to look at this is say, look, now it is time. Now it means when the stock reaches 2000, you're like, there's really, there's like practically no short interest. Now it's time to short Tesla. Okay. Now it's time to short Tesla. It's one way to look at it. Or it's time to say, hold on a second. Whoever shorted Tesla were burned. And if you're not aware of this, at least two or three hedge funds, they shorted Tesla. They were part of this group and they basically, they thought Tesla will not survive. Obviously Tesla survived and thriving. And what happened to their funds? They basically, they went out of business, simply put. So it's very interesting how you read or the short interest, you need to time it properly. It's like everything else in the market, you need to time it properly. But short interest is, is extremely important because you are really the one like somebody else is pulling against you. So you have to know when to short and when to uh, when to go long. The put call ratio, it's very similar or I, I would interpret it very similar to to the short interest. Um, what is a call? What is a put? A call option gives the investor the right to buy the stock. You have a, you have call option when you are optimistic, when you are bullish. Put option gives you the right to sell the stock. That's when you are pessimistic. You want to protect yourself. So what you do is you find the ratio for, for example, for a particular stock or the market overall, how many puts do we have in relationship to calls? The ratio of outstanding put option to outstanding call option. You could do it, for example, for Tesla specifically, or look at all the calls and all the put options. And often what people look at is the call and put option on the S&P 500, because it's reflecting the whole market. And if there's more puts, it's a pessimistic. If there's more call, it's optimistic. Obviously, what you want, a ratio, um, a ratio greater than one, it's, it means it's bull, uh, bearish because you have more, uh, more puts than calls. Okay. Because the put option, put options do well in falling market while the call option do well in rising market. A ratio is taken as a sign of the broad investor pessimism and a coming in market decline because you are protecting yourself. The put are increasing. Contrarian investors, on the other hand, believe that a good it's a good time to buy when the rest of the market is bearish. So what you do is you look at this and you say, okay, everybody is bearish. It's if the market is going down. It's time to buy because stock prices are unduly depressed. So it's time to buy. Therefore, they could 
present themselves as an opportunity to buy when you have this. So the, again, it depends how you interpret those signals. The most important is you understand the basics of these signals. As always, I'm going to remind you to like this lecture if you like it, share it, put it in playlist, and don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for this course as well as other accounting and finance courses. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.